Hello and welcome to the next installment in the strategic management video process. I want to talk today about vision and direction in your strategic management plans. And if you recall from the previous video, we're talking in our analogy of Google Maps about current location and final destination. What's important to remember, however, is that until we have some idea of the purpose of our journey, it's very difficult to set our final destination. So we've talked about, um, and we'll talk about a SWOT analysis and strategies and, and the purpose behind strategic planning. But one of the most important factors of strategic management is to first set the vision of the company. And in that, I want to talk about some of the drivers of the business environment that may change your strategies, but you'll start to see that it won't necessarily change your vision of your organization. First is the information revolution. Now, I might call it information overload because that's truly what it's become. There's so much more research, examples, people, businesses out there that it can actually become overwhelming to use your information literacy skills and determine what is the best information and what is most relevant to you and your organization. But to block out the information is also a mistake. Uh, there is a consulting company that would go in and, and work with organizations to make them more creative. And one of the things that they, uh, their tagline was to look at more stuff and think about it harder as a way to change the way you look at the business environment. Kids are great at this. They'll look at something, a dot on a wall, and it will become fantastic stories about bugs on adventures. We lose that somewhere along the way. So it's not only, uh, this, this driver of business environment is not only the amount and the relevance of the information, but what you do with it. And then when we look at technology, then innovation comes into play. New technologies, newly emerging markets, the ability to collaborate on a mass scale, and certainly the ability to use technology to be more efficient and more effective. The third point driving of this business environment that may change your strategies is globalization. Right? We're no longer bound by the borders of our state, of our province, of our nation, but we can truly do business globally, which brings amazing opportunities, but also brings some challenges. So how do you create a vision with these buffeting drivers in the business environment? Well, the first thing to understand is that vision isn't decided, it's it's discovered. Um, when you look at this article written by Colin and Perez in Harvard Business Review called Building Your Company's Vision. At the time it was written, it was very instrumental in the ways organizations saw themselves and it was based on some fantastic research. This idea of the vision in, a, in an organization has become almost second nature now because it's used so often. So what is this vision? They're core ideals that remain unchanged, that guides your decision making. It's your core ideology. So in one of my classes, a student brought up, well, what if you're in the typewriter business and then PCs came along? And my answer to the student was, being in the typewriter business is, is a purpose, it's not a vision. Taking people's ideas and bringing them to the masses, that's a vision, all right? And that can be typewriters, it can be PCs, it can be apps. So you see how there's a lot of questioning involved in getting to a business's vision. And it's not something that changes easily. Um, the core values, core purpose, and visionary goals make up this vision. Often um, business people and, and non-business people alike will use vision and mission interchangeably, but they're not the same. Let's take a look at why. So we're going to talk about core values first. And core values are the three to five central ideological values in an organization. They're deeply held. And they're independent of the industry, the environment, and any fads. And so the example of the typewriter company versus putting people's ideas in a form they can be shared, that's the difference between um, a strategy and a vision, all right, or a value. And um, no matter what changes, what are the values? So as you're discovering this for your organization, no matter what changes, what are the values that your firm will continue to hold on to? Here are some examples. 
Superior customer service is a, is a tightly held value of Nordstrom's. Pioneering technology is, could be summarize the values held by 3M. Creativity could be, is a guiding value of Disney. Integrity certain, uh, certainly is a guiding value of many companies. We all wish it were more, but many companies. And social responsibility and what that means to that organization in that industry, it would need to be articulated in a more specific way. So superior customer service, pioneering technology, creativity, integrity, social responsibility, these are the types of central values that you want to discover in your organization. Second is core purpose. When you look at the core purpose, um, you are looking now at is more, what is more closely held as the mission. So this is the reason that the firm exists. And often it is expressed in um, very closely crafted mission statement. And the reason it needs to be closely crafted is this is your competitive advantage put to paper or communicated externally. This is your point of difference. It's the way that you and your organization separate yourself from other companies. All right. So all businesses, for-profit or non-profit, just the, the method of revenue may be different, but all businesses want to earn money. Right? Your core purpose is about how you earn money. One of my favorite um, statements is from Boston Scientific because it leaves very little uh, room for error, if you will, and that is Boston Scientific's core purpose is to develop devices that save lives. Simple. Yes, they're selling devices to earn money, but they sell devices to save lives, and they will go into a little bit more detail about how they do that differently from others. Often, a 5-Y technique is used here. So you might start with, we sell checks. Why? So people can buy things. Why? It's important to be able to exchange money. Why? Because the world is constantly changing, the demands on us are evolving, and it's important to have different ways to exchange money. So is your purpose to sell checks or is your purpose to facilitate the transfer of money between individuals and businesses? Or businesses and businesses? Right now we're getting to a core purpose. And again, this is not selected, it's discovered, and they stem from the values in the organization. Right? The third point are visionary goals. And this takes certainly more um, of the planning muscles. Right? Visionary goals are lofty objectives, right? a future milestone that may require a decade or more to achieve. One way to, to sum this up is a BHAG, and this is often used in the industry lingo. It's a big, hairy, audacious goal. All right, this is not something that can be achieved in the short term. It's longer term and it's challenging. Your organization may have only a 50% chance of even meeting this goal. All right, so these are different than objectives. And typically, BHAGs fall into one of four categories. Right? You have the target BHAG, which is a quantitative or qualitative sales target. Or Ford's target, um, before they lost their footing, their BHAG was to democratize the automobile. All right, we'll get back to that. Uh, they were able to do that, by the way. But then what? All right. um, the next is the common enemy. And in this case, you're centered on overtaking a specific firm, such as the 1950s uh, goal of Philip Morris to replace RJR or um, the Reynolds Company. Now, unfortunately, that's not the best uh, example anymore since there were some issues with their core values, integrity being one. But if you're trying to overtake a specific firm and you're not in the number two spot, your common enemy might be one way to do that or articulate that goal. And then you have the role model, where you want to become like another firm in a different industry or market. So for example, a cycling accessories firm might set a goal to become the Nike of the cycling industry. All right. When I worked for the Minnesota Orchestra, uh, back before all the brouhaha over the, um, the musicians' contracts and the actions of the board in recent events, um, we had a customer service mission of becoming the Hilton Hotels of orchestras. Right? No time before had a, a symphony orchestra envisioned themselves like a hotel. Um, but yet we're in the similar service industries, but completely different industries, one being music, one being um, lodging. 
So that's a way to envision the role model. And then there's internal transformation especially appropriate for very large companies. For example, GE wanting to become number one or number two in every market it serves. That takes some significant internal transformation. Everything from processes and marketing and finance, accounting, the way they talk to customers, the way they serve customers. All right, so you're entirely transforming the way that you do business in order to reach your goal. Now this is the trick though. When your goal is reached, you need to set a new one. And that's what happened to Ford. Once they democratized the automobile, they forgot to go through the strategic management process again and set a new BHAG. They faltered. In the last five years or so, Ford is one of the only American automobile manufacturing companies that did not take government TARP funds. Why? They brought in a new CEO that set a new vision. They wanted to be an independent, competitive American car company. And they've started to transform their BHAG, transform their way of doing business with each other as well as with the customer. And now they have a new vision to move toward. So replacing your BHAG when you've reached it is tremendously important. So all of this, this process of working through a SWOT analysis, defining your strategies, if all you're doing from year to year is setting new action plans and you're not grounding that in your mission, your values, your goals, then you're starting to lose direction, right? Because you'll continue to move forward, but are you moving forward toward the right destination? That's always the question. Thank you for your time.